down 600 points. The S&P and NASDAQ also ended the day in negative territory, as you can see there. The S&P dropped by just over 2%. Tech-heavy Nasdaq fell by about 2.5%. Joining us now is Melissa Armo. She is the founder and owner of The Stock Swoosh, an international education company that teaches people how to trade stocks. Welcome, Melissa. So tell us, what was driving U.S. stocks today? What do you make from today's closing market? Well, we saw that Friday, too, if you remember. So we had a follow-through day today from the selling from Friday, and I think we're going to have more selling. We can even have more selling tomorrow. There's a lot of things going on that are affecting the market right now to sell off the last 24 to 48 hours and into the coming days this week. One is there's a big meeting for the Fed that doesn't happen until Friday, but a lot of people, market participants, investors are predicting that the Fed is going to talk about raising rates even more. And also we have all of the conflict that's going on in Ukraine and Russia, and that could come to more of a head this week too. So there's just so many things right now that are weighing on the market and nothing really to alleviate fears in the market. There's, there's no reason really to go long right now or to buy unless, of course, you want to go long in your retirement account and you're nowhere near retirement. Yeah. If you're seeing these decreases in the market, you have the ability to take advantage of them. Uh, let's talk a little bit more. You mentioned the, the predictions about the Fed. There's a lot of investors that are fearing more aggressive interest rate increases. Um, tell us what you, what's your take on the possibility of more rate hikes. Where do you estimate that or where, where are you expecting the Fed is likely going to go? Well, they're, they're, they're definitely going to increase rates in September. That's the next big meeting where they could increase them. Whether or not it's going to be 50 basis points or 75 or even 1% remains to be seen. I think people are looking for an indication of where they're going to go with that in the, in the meeting on Friday and Saturday. But my take on this is that raising interest rates is not going to prevent a recession. First of all, some people are saying that we are already in a recession. Some people are saying we are headed into a recession into the end of 2022 and into 2023. In my opinion, though, raising rates is the worst thing for consumers right now because it's going to just mean higher costs for consumers. The reason that we have high inflation is because we have, we're still having issues with getting everybody back to work. There's still too many jobs open, still too much to do. And also, so we have high gas prices and raising interest rates isn't going to lower gasoline prices and gasoline prices aren't going to get lowered until we start drilling actually here in the United States. That would help lower price, the price of diesel fuel. And that is really affecting food and everything else that we buy. So again, raising interest rates isn't going to pull the price of food down. It's not going to pull the price of housing down. And in fact, it's going to hurt the housing market, which of course we saw a boom in in the last couple of years. A lot of people took advantage of the housing boom, were able to sell their houses at higher prices. And now people, it's going to slow everything down because of course, mortgage rates have gone up and they're going to go up more in the next couple of months as well. It's all a delicate balance, one that the Fed is uh, considering as they're trying to, to hit that sweet spot. But as they are raising interest rates, China cut benchmark interest rates on loans to households and businesses on Monday, a week after cutting two of its policy rates. How is the overseas economic slowdown and officials' efforts to combat it impacting the U.S. economy? Well, that's a good point. That's another reason the market was down today, too, because, of course, China is the second largest economy. First is the United States, and the second largest economy is China. China is a huge, massive country. And guess what? We buy a lot of products from China. So if they're slowing down economically, it's not a good sign for the United States to slow down economically. Because, of course, if they're not manufacturing and producing enough, there's not enough for us to buy over here. And again, we're buying things a lot cheaper from China than we manufacture them in the United States. So it's a sign that, again, they could be going into recession, we could be going into recession, but I will say this, they're doing the right thing, I think, by cutting rates. You know, the Fed, it is a difficult balance, but I think they overshot it because they kept interest rates too low for too long. Now they're going to overshoot it again because they're going to rise, they're going to raise rates too quick, too fast, and too soon. So they're going to overshoot it again. I know it's a difficult job, uh, you know, the Fed chairman has a difficult job, but the Fed really kept interest rates low, too low too long. And then, of course, we had so much stimulus per 
you know, since COVID, I think actually that stimulus hurt the economy in the United States. We're talking 24 months past COVID. It's too much. And now they're talking about doing more stimulus. That's just not going to help what we need right now. We need people to get back to work. We need these jobs to be filled. We need to keep interest rates steady. I would say don't raise them anymore between now and the end of the year. Just let the economy be, see where we go. I think it's going to hurt the economy if they keep raising them. And again, as you pointed out, China's doing the exact opposite because they're trying to promote growth. They want, they don't want growth to slow down anymore. They want growth to continue. And they've had a pullback. And that isn't going to be good for them being such a huge superpower. Certainly some criticisms that we have heard reflected by others as well. But it does look like the Fed is likely going to increase those rates. All right, Melissa Armo, thank you so much. Thank you.